can you tell people who don't know Gaza? I know Gaza very well. Again, you know, it is the most populated area on earth. You know, you, only, you have 50% of the population under the age of 16 or 17. And it's all of them are children. What, what actually makes me extremely angry is when, when, when you look at those children, how they are going to survive, how they are going to live with these traumas they are facing every day. Yesterday, I read the report by the, the International uh, Cross Organization. They are saying that they found, they have been asking the Israeli for the last four days to go and check a houses in Zaytun district of Gaza because the Israeli bombed them and they did not let them go and uh, look at check the houses, the bodies. take mm. the bodies. And what they, what they have seen there, they have seen children, you know, sucking the toes of their mom who is dead. You know, children, babies among dead cops there. Unbelievable. Well, you know, they said we, we never seen something like this in the whole of our lives. And even in history, children are among dead bodies there. Their mothers, their fathers, their uncles, their cousins, their brothers, their sisters. How those people will live this trauma? You know, how those children will live, you know, when they see these F-16. Imagine using F-16 in Gaza, which is no, air, no aircraft gun, anti-aircraft guns, nothing at all. You know, my, my cousin and my, my brother told me that you cannot imagine the, 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 the scare, the, terror, the, the yeah. horror mm -hmm. on children when, when it starts, you know, just breaking the, the sound barriers and throwing the, the, the rockets on innocent people there. So. It's, it's, forgive it's me, uh, forgive me asking you this because I know you're a, you're a publisher. You have to uh, move in the Arab world and so on. But where are the Arabs during all of this? The Arabs are collaborators. You know, the government. I'm talking about governments. I'm not talking about people. The Egyptian government is a collaborator with with, with the Israelis. Imagine, you know. Today, I wrote an editorial in, in our front page saying why President Mubarak is for preventing doctors to go and join their brothers who cannot cope with, with the injured people. 4,000 until now were injured. And the hospital there, it's a very primitive hospital. They cannot cope with the amount of injured people. Why Hosni Mubarak and his government not allowing 100 doctors coming from all over the world to go and help their brothers who are performing uh, operations for those injured or, or, or even, even uh, you know, children? So why? When, and what, what pretext? Is well, it, you know, because the Israeli, it's not safe to go. The people said, we can't write undertaking that we are responsible for and anything ourselves. happened to us. Mm. said, no, no, you are not Allah. So this is collaboration. This is collaboration with the Israeli. He was embracing Livni oh, yes. as the bombs began to fall, literally. He yes. was with her in Cairo. It's inconceivable that he was not told by Israel that this savage assault was about to be launched, surely. George Sh Shimon Beres, the Israeli president, he gave an interview to a Spanish newspaper saying that the Arab governments told us to get rid of Hamas, to smash Hamas. And there were reports in the Arts Israeli newspaper saying that, you know, Hosni Mubarak and the Egyptian government blessed these kind of incursions in Gaza. So they are involved because they don't want the culture of resistance to spread on the Arab world. Hamas and Hezbollah were representing the two wings of this culture of resistance. They want to kill it. They presented the, the Arab Peace Initiative. They are begging the Israeli to accept it. They actually opened also the, the faith the dialogue between faiths. And, you know, they are begging the Israeli, please take us, please accept us as partner. And they started the normalization with the relation with the Israelis. So who is spoiling the show for them? Hamas and Hezbollah. That's the problem. So they tried the Israeli to smash Hezbollah, and the Arabs actually were preparing themselves to celebrate the end of Hezbollah. But Hezbollah failed them when they actually yeah. uh, fought in yeah. heroic ways, for, and they stayed fast for about 34 days. Now Hamas again foiled them and spoiled the show for them. They are not going to celebrate over the uh, death bodies of people of Gaza. So that's the problem. They are waiting to see Hamas wipe off the map completely. That's now, the problem. You are uh, one of the Batal, one of the freedom fighters. We're joined on the line now by another, the former U.S. Congresswoman for Georgia, former presidential candidate, Cynthia McKinney. She was on the aid ship called Dignity, which was rammed by an Israeli warship off Gaza just a few days ago, but still managed to get through. Cynthia, welcome to The Real Deal. 
Well, thank you so much for having me on, George. Well, uh, you're one of my personal heroes, and it's great to talk to you again. Tell us what happened to you when you tried to sail into Gaza. Well, the Dignity had sailed into Gaza five previous times successfully, carrying medical supplies to the people and defying the Israeli blockade. Well, um, I received a call from one of the co-founders of the organization, Free Gaza Movement, and asked me if I would go to Gaza on the boat the next day. And this was right as Israel had started its aerial bombardment. And, of course, I said yes. Um, interestingly, my father told me two things before I left. He said, um, make sure you write down everything, and you're going to be sitting ducks out there. And surely enough, um, with much fanfare, we had a great, successful press conference before we left. It's my understanding that the Free Gaza Movement also faxes the manifest to the Israeli uh, military staff so that they know the course, the time, the content of dignity and the passengers. And uh, despite this having been done as a routine measure, uh, the Israelis began to trail us. And, of course, their, their engines are huge and fast, and they can go very fast. And they began to shine their spotlight on us. There were three of them, three of the Israeli warships. And eventually um, they shut their spotlights off, and the next thing we knew, we were flying everywhere. The um, Dignity was hit three times, twice in the front, once uh, on the side where I was sitting, and um, uh, we couldn't believe it. One of the doctors, a British doctor, David Halpin, um, who was sitting right next to me, said that now is our time to recollect our lives because we need to prepare for death. And that's what I began to do. Interestingly, the Israelis didn't realize that we had three Al Jazeera reporters on board who maintained contact with Al Jazeera throughout our uh, journey. And Al Jazeera was carrying our the story of the dignity live as a breaking news story. And so then after we were hit, um, we were on with a constant, we were on uh, continuously with constant updates from their staff. We also had a CNN reporter who I could hear him arguing with the CNN staff that what they were being told by the Israelis was not true. And the idea of the reporter having, who is on the scene and is a witness and is also a victim, having to argue because CNN was determined to broadcast the Israeli disinformation rather than the truth. Well, thank God for uh, Al Jazeera and thank God for saving you and your fellow heroes on board the the dignity, how did you manage to land after being rammed three times? 